Birds flying high, you know how I feel. Ooh, you know how I feel. It's a new dawn. It's a new day, it's a new life for This is actually perfect. This is just gonna be a cozy evening video. I'm going to shoot for it to actually be decently long as opposed to trying to make it as short as possible because I want to give you guys a good chunk of time to take on a project. So it was mentioned to me that crafty live streams might be something that's in order um, and I loved the idea. I did a live stream last week. It was not a craft one, but I did a live stream last week. And I talked about this a bit then, um, about how excited I am that there's, uh, that I have, that the people who have found this channel are into like crafting and that sort of thing. Um, so, you know, I, I wanted to sit down and film a Reckless Rambles and I really just wanted this to be kind of like cozy, cozy update time. And now I've just been given the most beautiful ASMR backdrop to ever, to ever do such a thing. <laughs> so um, it's very, it's very exciting. I'm going to change things up a little bit so that it's comfortable for me. Man, this is unfocused as hell. So what's going on here? Uh, I'm now filming on a new phone. So there's going to be a little bit of a... There's going to be a learning curve. There's going to be a little bit of a learning curve. It's okay. We love a personal growth journey. Uh, I've already s accidentally stopped recording like so many times. Um, that has been part of the process, so... You know, it is what it is. I think I've heard that I can, this would be better if I angled it. You know, that does seem better. Growing and changing, ever improving, fabulous. <laughs> So, so, it was mentioned to me that, like, a, a crafty man, the fact that you can see the shadow of the camera behind me, I hate that. It was mentioned to me that, like, a crafty kind of live stream might be something that would be fun to do. Um, and I love that idea. I don't tend to do 
a lot of indoor crafts. Sorry, I'm like, what am I, where am I going with this? So I don't tend to do a lot of indoor crafts during the summertime. Our summers are so short, so I'm just really trying to like get everything done outside that I can. And so uh, I love doing, I love me a DIY. And this past, so life update. <laughs> so this past uh, week, my partner took the week off work. And initially, the plan was that we were actually going to go camping in the mountains for this week and go on a little trip. But, but um, you know, as it was getting closer and closer to time to leave, I mean, not that's not really true. So it was like July. This is like the end of August now. It was like July, and I was already thinking, you know, oh, well, if the wildfires... Okay, because going camping in the mountains in the end of August is kind of like wildfire season, right? So this was pointed out to me when I was planning this trip and I was like, well, I mean, I've been to the mountains in the fall before though and it was fine. So I thought, well, you know, we'll keep the trip on and then if uh, there's too many wildfires, we'll just go up north in my own province because I've actually never traveled, sorry, I've never traveled as far north as I would like to in my own home province. So I figured I'll just do that instead. And then, you know, my whole entire province was just also on fire. So, <coughs> all this made, uh, so all this made camping seem sort of ill-advised. And then also, we've been camping like six times this summer we have just had the best freaking summer uh we made a new group of friends in like mid-june and it was just the most incredible timing um and we've just had so much fun this summer camping with our new friends it's been fantastic uh so we didn't feel like we needed to go camping for a week but we did feel like we needed to do some projects around the house so that is what we opted for instead and so we set up this little nook here this is an indoor project obviously but we set so we set up this nook um by the window and i refinished the butcher block didn't refinish i put a couple coats of mineral oil on the butcher block countertop insert some footage maybe and I created myself this wonderful little place where I can just sit and by an open window and listen to the rain. Which is honestly just such a dream come true for me. I love the rain. Oh my goodness, I love the rain. The rain is my favorite weather, and when it rains, I just, if I can't be outside actually in the rain, I just want to sit, like, outside under a, a, an awning or by a window with the window open and the rain blowing in. Um, I could just sit. I could just sit me by a window in a rain, on a rainy day forever. So having this little spot is so exciting and it's kind of like temporary. We're gonna do something, this is just a card table and it's, as you probably saw in earlier shots, it's rather ugly, <laughs> but it, it's uh, giving us the feeling of what this would setup would be like. And so far we, I love it. I mean, who cares about so far? I love it, point blank, I love it. So this is gonna be a thing. Um, and this is actually sort of the first of many DIY projects that I want to do around the house. Oh, listen to that thunder. And the thunder rolls. The thunder rolls. I'm keeping that time. Every light is burning in a house across town. She's pacing by the telephone in her faded flannel gown. Asking for a miracle 
Hoping she's not right Praying it's the weather That kept him up all night And the thunder rolls The thunder rolls So this is the start of I'm gonna I'm gonna do some DIYs that's gonna be kind of my big well okay so this is a big winter project I don't know if I'm finishing any of my thoughts good grief um I don't okay so I love I love crafting I love I love all the crafty things I don't tend to do indoor like knitting type projects uh when it's nice outside I do as many outdoor things as I can so I will look, look forward to doing some cozy winter, maybe when it, we're getting closer to, to, to Yule time, do some knitting. Uh, or so, that would be so ideal. And I also spoke about this in the live stream that I did, but now on the upload that, you know, probably more people will watch. Well, maybe not if I make it like an hour. Rats. <laughs> That's okay. The people who are watching long uploads are the people who are going to care about long live streams. I just realized oh, it all works out. So I would love to do some live streams. There are two limiters that I have to live streaming and they both have to do with how small my channel is. Which by the way, my channel has absolutely like quadrupled in the last two weeks. It's been fantastic. I'm so excited and I just, hello, thank you everybody for being here and for being so supportive and watching the things I'm putting out. It's been fantastic. Uh, but anyway, Though my channel has literally, like, I've had this channel for about five years, and it took me about five years to get to about 120 subscribers, and now it's been less than a month, and I'm at, like, basically, I'm basically at 500, so, uh, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm so humbled and excited, and, and thank you for being here, <laughs> um, but, those of you who are, are here will be, I don't know what, where I was going with that sentence. Those of you who are here will be interested to hear, why would you be interested? Anyway, um, so I cannot live stream from my phone until my channel has a thousand subscribers. So we're like halfway there. This is very exciting, but this is like, this is the reason, this is a reason for a 1000 subscriber push because it's hard to live stream on my laptop. That's and that's my only other option of what to live stream from, especially like crafting content. Like it's, it's and like my cam my laptop camera is really truly quite terrible, as you will have seen if you've watched that live stream. Like it's really bad, so it just feels like, um, I don't know. I mean, live streaming from my phone would be tough too. So probably I just need a better computer. I don't know, but. For real though, I, I would prefer to live stream from my phone. I have like a tripod, I can set up angles and like I could actually like, I could be knitting right now, right? I could actually create an angle that you could see my face and what I'm doing, but that would be like so difficult to do with a laptop to angle it down and stuff. And then even if I did, the video quality would be so low. So, and then the other reason that I would love to get this channel up to a thousand subscribers is so that I can use the community tab features because there's no community tab features anymore for smaller channels and so when I go live it's just like at random and at will basically uh, PS follow me on my socials if you want to I'll put them in the description uh, I try I'm trying to stay off Twitter because I tend to be kind of snarky in the written word and I've come to realize that it doesn't really translate and then people just think I'm a total asshole which I am I am and definitely like I'm I am a total asshole but <laughs> It, does, it doesn't come across in like a funny way when I write it down. So um, I'm, I, I'm, I am on the Twitter, but I'm holding back because everything I write just sounds snarky and sarcastic and kind of me. Whoops.
I mentioned that I'm filming on a new phone. It just occurred to me to hope that this audio is going okay. I'm getting like a little bit of a doubling effect in my ear, which makes me think that maybe I didn't get a camera setting, you know, I didn't get, I didn't, whatever. My phone prompted me for a, a microphone setting earlier today when I was using it, and it didn't do that this time. It makes me wonder if there's a setting I need to do. Anyway, we'll see. This audio is trash. I'm sorry. Follow me on my socials, and I will do my best to make an announcement before I actually go live. I, uh, it's, you know, it's probably would be a good thing for me to, to do things that are a little bit scheduled in that regard, because whenever I decide that I want to do a live stream, I just, like, mess around all day and never actually end up doing it. Like, I just mess around with audio and I just, I just mess around with a bunch of shit, and I am never satisfied, and... And then I want to, then I want to not. And then I want to not. So if I was scheduled, if I was like, hey, I'm, I'm live at this time on this day. I would have to just do it, right? I, I couldn't I couldn't just waste my day fucking around with audio equipment and then uh, not ever go live because I'm not happy, right? Like, I wouldn't have the option to do that because I've already announced that I'm going live. So, yeah. So, yeah. No, um, so if I actually, you know, had to announce it somewhere and people were seeing it, I would have less of an excuse to waste my day and not actually put anything out which would be great for everybody I feel especially for me least of all me I would love it if I didn't just spend my whole day fluffing around with things and then not actually get something up but it's all part of the process so back to the DIY stuff uh yeah I will be doing some some lots of DIY content for this channel I hope that's the plan uh That's gonna be my focus for like this. That's like kind of like I'm, I'm I'm re okay. So this is what I want to tell you. So I'm I'm redoing my house. I'm going to re decorate like most of the rooms. Most of the rooms in my house are gonna get changed around. And so this is really like please subscribe for more DIY and home decor content <laughs> because that's where I'm hoping that this is gonna go. That's the hope. Because when I was in Mary Kay, I rearranged like my whole entire house and life, but I rearranged my whole entire house to accommodate that. We converted the larger bedroom in our house into a TV room and we moved our bed into the smaller room. And then I took the nice big front room with the big picture window and the good light and just like easily the nicest best room in the house i ga gave it over to my mary Kay. like i was committed it was the room by the front so if i could, could try to kind of not show people the rest of my house and then i didn't have to I'd keep the whole thing clean theoretically in my mind and th there's you know shelves right by the door when you first come in so people could see my product and i thought that was good for sales and i am just so ready to reclaim my house. I am so ready to reclaim my house. This is my house. Why is it set up so weird? And why did it take me so long? Well, the answer is because I still have the product, so it's still on the shelf, but I haven't been holding skincare classes in my house for like two years. So I don't need this, you know, the workspace. 
and I can get the shit off the shelf any time. It's just that once it's in boxes, I know I decided to mind I'll never sell it, so it stays until it's gone. But I could still have, a, like, enjoy the rest of the room. It doesn't have to be so strangely used, so... This is exciting, because it's going to um, give us... Well, it's going to give us our house back. Uh, I won't go too in-depth on what the whole plan is with... I mean, it's just shuffling all the furniture around. Like, all the living room stuff is going back into the living room. The master bedroom stuff is going back into the bigger bedroom. And then the smaller room is going to be, like, my room. And I'm going to have a desk in there. And crafting supplies it might be a good place to film so it'll be its own little separate spot anyways i'm very i'm pumped i'm so pumped about this so there's going to be so much de decorating going on decorating diys uh home decor maybe a little bit of light renovations happening uh that's what i am kind of going to be putting a lot of energy and love and passion into in the coming weeks and months and the rest of this year probably so that that's that's that that that's gonna be that uh in addition in addition in addition to some other fun crafting content now i'm gonna continue to do like sit down chatty videos like this where i talk about my experiences in mary Kay and where i do like just like life updatey type of things uh that that's that format is working for me that is staying I was feeling really insecure about this video because I didn't have like a, a super point for it. Um, I do have some MLM related things that I can talk about, but I just wanted them to be their own videos. And I also just wanted to take an opportunity to just share what's been going on in my life. So I know that it's probably a pretty small subsection of my subscriber base that's really here for like an unfocused, but like that's why it's Reckless Rambles because it's not supposed to be focused. It's supposed to be a mess. That was the whole, for me, the whole point of this format is that it's a mess and that's just like the whole freaking point and I'm not supposed to overthink it and I don't um, devote insane amounts of mental resources towards something that is just going up for free on the internet anyway. isn't going to change the course of human history. It's just a YouTube video and people can leave if they don't like it. There's no reason to take it so seriously. Calm yourself down. This is what I tell myself. Calm yourself down. In the great and immortal words of Taylor Swift, you need to calm down. But that's kind of why it's so perfect that we wound up with this really nice, um, like, uh, audio backdrop. Because I just wanted, I, I needed to get back into the habit of filming. It's a new phone. I'm not sure how I'm going to be editing things moving forward. I have no freaking plan. I don't know why I ever expected myself to have a plan. There is no plan. It's fine. But my, my new phone has like twice the storage of my old phone, so <laughs> this problem that keeps popping up of my phone running out of space, it's not a problem for now. It, it's going to come again. It's gonna, it's, this problem is going to continue to persist, but not my problem today. I'm sure I can edit this video. My phone's hardly got anything on it now. I didn't put any apps. So there's a thought. I just have a new, I, I got a new phone. Oh my God, what? y'all just a second so now I'm boiling the kettle and it sounds like seven screaming demons so I'm gonna lip sync voice over this part and spare you I decided that I needed a cup of coffee with some Jameson in it everybody feel free to pour a drink with me honest to goodness I felt like I needed an excuse to be this this is how I am. So I'm gonna have a drink and then I'm gonna blame the fact that I can't finish a thought on that. That's my plan. Join me if you are legal and able and feel like it's a good choice.
and the sun is far and as fast as I can. I guess I am. The monsters won't catch me then. I remember the days with me hiding away in my closet and under my bed. Now I can run. Now I can run. And the monsters are only inside of my head. Because Canada. I'm just kidding. I know it's a Canadian state stereotype, but like. How do y'all not love maple syrup? How? Oh, maybe, I, maybe my phone is charged well enough that I can like, oh, I just would love to show you the way the sun is like shining through the trees. My phone is, I had to plug it in. I don't know if I explained any of why this is so weird, but I uh, had to plug my phone in before I could actually film this. It told me it was, ugh, let's just stick with what we know. Let's just stick with what's barely working and call it a day. <laughs> Why can't I film a video without like changing the angle as I go? Like what's, what kind of like, I don't know. I don't even know what the, what that, what kind of like, desire to change the picture in the middle of the story like just always want it to be better I guess I don't know anyway cheers everybody Irishing up my coffee Ooh, Irishing up my coffee this is some real Irish whiskey right yes smooth Irish whiskey made from the John Jameson way cool cheers I don't know if I made the connection, but this is very Irish weather to me. So, nice Irish coffee for this Irish weather. We're having a theme now. Welcome to my theme night. Now, I don't know what this video is, and I think that's why I'm having such a hard time, like, sticking on topic and, like, having a... Ah. <sighs> so, I, you know, I took a week off of filming and editing and doing things because my husband had the week off work and we were gonna go camping, but then we've been camping so many times this summer with all of our friends. And I just felt like, you know, my guy, he is an introvert and he does work outside the home like regular people do. And I just think that like, by the time he's done working all day, or by the time he's done working this all summer and his work has been so busy, it's been working a lot. So we stayed home and we focused on some projects around the house. We set up this wonderful little coffee bar with the wind by the window so I can watch the rain. And this is gonna be a great place in the winter time too. And I used the space already. I wrote two songs, which the rain is so excited about. The rain is clapping for me. No, I finished two songs, which is really exciting because I've had a, I have historically struggled to complete things. It's like the, like, divine inspiration or, like, whatever. You get, like, the verse and the chorus, the first verse and the chorus, but then the rest of it is just, like, you're going to actually have to sit your ass down and work for this. And I just, I've never felt like I had a reason to. Um, but I kind of feel like I have a reason to now. Uh, you know, there's no, it, uh, it would just be so helpful to have music that I can play on this channel and not worry about like getting copy claimed all the time. You know, I mean, obviously covers are great and preferred in the YouTube space because like people want to hear songs that they already know. Like I get that for sure. I absolutely understand why people like cover. I love covers. People want to hear what they already know, but it just seems like why would I want to you know, um, why would I want to have videos taken down 
because I just want to sing. It just seems like, you know, if you can do it, maybe you should try to do it. So I, I did. I tried to do it. Sorry, I'm playing with this candle. It's little. It needs to. Oh, crap. That was quite a fail on my part. My goodness. So distractible. But I, I this this is like, if you if, does anybody want to know why I have a hard time sitting down and finishing a song? I feel like I'm doing a pretty good job of like giving you a freaking object lesson. I can't even tell you how, I'm trying to tell you how I can't sit and finish a song. And I can't finish telling you that because I have to play with this candle. Like you need to understand the priorities of this life. Stop. So, but I did sit my ass down and finish not one but two songs fun story neither of them were the songs I thought I was gonna write but the one I wanted to work on didn't want to be born so I wrote a couple other ones and I'm I'm so happy with them and it just it feels so good to complete something and it was like my uh I get it now I guess maybe it was like my um like my horoscope for the year from Deborah Silverman Astrology. Love her. Anyway, I checked out her stuff at the beginning of the year and her thing for my sun sign, Pisces, was a little like mantra is, I will let my creativity flow in one step at a time and I will finish what I start. And so this has been very helpful to me because now I have finished what I start. But the first part, the I will let my creativity flow in one step at a time, I really had to tap into that today and yesterday because I started writing music for the, that song, those songs, like guitar chords, try to figure out what the guitar chords were. And this is just something that I have never been able to do. I've never been able to figure out the chords by ear to a song. I always have to look them up and I can't remember them. And this is something that has held me back from playing the guitar, like publicly and privately and for fun and for practice for years. And I know, you know, different people have different, you know, like I might not have the best ear for music or for that sort of thing. That could be true. But like, I, I, th that's also something that could absolutely be developed with like, you know, work and effort and, and trying. So it feels really good to be, to be trying something and to be working that muscle. And and I guess it's just kind of, you know, stepping out and taking a chance. And the rain stopped. So I've never felt like figuring out music by ear was something that I was any good at. And so I just have let it stop me from, from not trying. I've let it stop me from trying, basically. And I've just come to realize that that's silliness, you know? It's, it's a skill that can be developed like any other skill. And, and I also realized that I've been carrying, just realized this yesterday, I've been carrying this like false belief, it really is a false belief actually, around with me for years when it comes to music, and that is that there is only one right note or only one right chord to play. And I realized that that's not really true. Like when you're trying to figure out what the chords are for a song, what the music is, like there's better choices and not so great choices, but I think that like shifting my focus from like trying to find the one exact perfect chord that it's, that I'm supposed to be playing. And then, um, like just second guessing myself to the point where I just, I can't even move forward because 
And like, it's so silly when you think about it, because really, if I just played it as well as I could, like, you would refine it, right? You would real, you would, you, you work on the parts that sound not so good, and you work on them until they sound better. But my inability to advance if something isn't perfect, like, I can't, you know, if it's not perfect, then I can't move on. Oh, that's not the right, that's not, that's not the right chord. I give up. Like, okay, but see if you can get most of the chords right, and then one of them, like, close to right, and then as time goes on, you'll, you'll, figure it out you know you'll you can you can improve it as you go but just say no like if I can't get if I can't play this perfectly then I'm not gonna move on I'm not gonna try I'm not gonna play it at all it's just like really fucking silly and And I'm just so tired of letting my lack of confidence in myself hold me back. Like, that's the real, that's the real, real. I'm gonna change this camera angle. Okay, I'm back. I like this better. You just felt so far away from me over there and for no reason. Yeah, I'm just so tired of, of letting my lack of confidence stop me from doing things. Like, my lack, like, literally, it's like I'm so unconfident that I'm, playing the right chord that I just I don't even want to play at all and it's made me realize that I'm whenever I'm playing music and there could be and there's people like it's so hard for me to play music in front of people and whenever I do I realized that I'm always playing with the thought of that one person or more like that one person who is you know more talented than me has a better than ear, ear than me who's criticizing if my guitar is in tune He's critiquing if I'm playing the right chord. And like, I, I just realized that this, I've been carrying this like teenage insecurity around with me into my adult life. And I call it a teenage insecurity because like, I feel like that's such a like teen angst thing that like everybody's looking at me and judging me and oh my God, I'm so embarrassed to even be alive. And I mean, I probably have like a lot of trauma around performing and playing music that's like centered around when I was a teen because I was like, bullied a lot for performing and I have a lot of like kind of real questionable memories of um they're not questionable memories I've, I've had some real questionable experiences performing live but like literally who hasn't you know and I realized that not too long ago that yeah my stage fright is pretty well earned based on some of the crazy some of the experiences that I've had but that's actually empowering because I mean like you know we've heard stories I've heard stories of you know stand-up comedians who were booked to play at like the public library or the you know the, the college cafeteria you know and there's like literally people trying to study and they're like what the fuck are you doing like literally what the fuck are you doing um but you know you were hired for a job and so you just show up and you do the show that you were hired to do and you're like man it's like the the book comedian's fault that they booked me for such a stupid gig and uh, I'm not putting myself on that you know plat like I'm not putting myself on that caliber by any means of like somebody who's actually made it but I'm yeah. just it it's very like validating to realize that these are just crazy experiences that happen when you perform like you could yeah. just have some guy come up to you and like almost end up in a fist fight because he doesn't want you to be playing there anymore. Even though you were asked by the event organizers to play there and you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, there could be a guy there that doesn't like that. And then a couple of grown men might almost have a fight over it. It's happened. It's happened to me. So I, I guess it's, it's like validating to realize that my, my, my fears are not unfounded. <laughs> my concerns are valid. Uh, but also, like, okay, so back to this hypothetical, like, I'm playing, you know, at a, a gathering, at a party, at a whatever, group, where there's, like, a group of people, a camp, trip, whatever. I'm playing my guitar, or my uke, whatever. I'm playing somewhere, and there's somebody who doesn't like it and is judging it. Like, okay. So, f like, fucking judge it then, man. Like, judge away. Judge your face off. Judge to your heart's content. Seriously. Because why, why am I wasting uh, mental resources on 
somebody I wouldn't want to be friends with. Because that's like the real deal, right? It's like, I, that's not the person I want to go for drinks with. The person who's going to sit and listen to somebody who's like playing a song or doing, working on something. Like, like the per even when it comes to my YouTube videos, the people who are going to come across my videos and, and think that they're cringe and like judge me and think I suck and want to bully me. Like, okay, fucking go for it. Like, why do I care? I, I wouldn't, like, if that's the kind of person you are, I don't think you're cool. I don't, I don't want to be your friend. And your, your opinion's trash. So, like, literally, why? Why am I letting myself be held back in life by, like, these fictitious people whose opinions I, I wouldn't care about if they existed? I don't know, man. But... I sure did let those fictitious people hold me back for a long time. But yeah, realize, so I realize that I'm playing, you know, with like the thinking of judging myself from the perspective of someone who's, who's better and more talented and more experienced than me and like how bad they think it is. But like, why am I trying to impress that person when there's like 10 other people who are sitting there like vibing with it? Like, those are my people, you know? And I'm not saying, like, you don't listen to, like, critics and you don't take uh, negative feedback, like, for sure. But, you know, you also have to realize that, like, there's just some people who are just, like, not going to fuck with it. And that's okay. That's fine. This applies to anything in life. So I realized that it's not about playing the right chord or the best, it's not about playing the right chord or the perfect chord. It's just about better choices and not so great choices. And there are some choices, you know, that are just objectively terrible. This is clearly not the right chord to play that part of the song. And then there are some that are pretty good and there are some that are better than that. And the more that you play it and the more you familiar, familiarize yourself with the music writing process, I say to me, the better you're going to play that song, the more you're going to be in tune to some options that you might have. Maybe you'll figure out a sound you've never played before, you know? Because you weren't so wrapped up on trying to, like, hit some kind of perfect criteria. And it's so freeing to think of writing music that way, of better choices and worse choices. And then I realized today, this, like, absolute and utter dread that I've had. Well, the reason, because this is what I was thinking. I don't have this kind of cringe or, like, I existential dread about writing lyrics. I have an English degree. I love writing. I'm very, I love, I, I, I'm very comfortable with writing, I guess. And I, I, I didn't always feel that way. I really did not always feel that way. And what has been confidence building for me about my writing, honestly, is the experience of coming back to stuff my, my old writing back when I was 16 and finding that some of it's pretty good. Like, it's really too bad that I had to, like, live for 16 years and then look back in retrospect and be like, oh, yeah, this stuff is good. Like, there's stuff that I wrote when I was 16 years old that I stand by, like, 13 years later or however many years it would be, 13, 17 years later. And that's so confidence-building for me to be like, well, look, I mean, yeah, of course I've, I've improved as a writer. That's not what I'm saying. But to be able to look back at some, most of the stuff I've written, you know, throw it off the edge of the earth. But there are some things that I wrote in high school that I still like. And I don't want to wait another 16 years to look back on the stuff that I wrote now and be like, you really could have, you know, released that. You could have published it. You know, I don't want to wait for my life to be over. I want to know right now, what will it be? I don't want to wait for my life to be over. I want to know right now, what will it be? Will it be? I don't want to wait for my life to be over. Will it be? Yes, or will it be? Sorry. I hope I didn't wreck my mic earlier today because I'm getting some weird feedback, but it's also a new cat, new phone, so we'll see. We'll see if it's bad.
I don't know what I would have what I would have done to wreck it unless it got like one single drop of water on it from these leaves and that was enough to just end the whole deal. I, I don't know. We'll find out when we edit it, won't we? The crows agree. <laughs> the crow gods agree. <laughs> But yeah, so with all this angst and existential dread of trying to write music to songs I've written, I need to let my creativity come in one step at a time and not get so frustrated with myself when I don't get it right away. That's what I was saying to my husband yesterday because he said, you know, this is supposed to be fun because he could tell that I was like really angsting. I was, I was really frustrated. And that was a really good reminder that like the like creativity is supposed to be fun and it was not fun for me yesterday I was just really the creative process sometimes it just feels like you're just really willfully breaking yourself over the coals because every fucking thing you make you hate it it's trash it's the worst you don't even want to go on you don't want to continue but you don't have a freaking choice like that's like the thing right it's like don't you think that I would just stop this nonsense and do something normal if that was something that felt available to me But I wanted to do something creative with my life forever, for freaking ever. For as long as I can remember, I've wanted to do something creative. And for as long as I can remember, I've been afraid of rejection, afraid of failure, and I've held myself to these, these impossible standards of perfection that make it so that I can't even freaking try. And I'm just n not going to live the rest. Like, it's not freaking going. It's not a phase, you know? Like, this, this, like, desire to have creative outlets and to make shit and put it out into the world. It, the, the impetus to make things doesn't go away. It doesn't... If you're a young person, young people... No, if you're, like, a, a teen and you want to follow some creative passion, freaking do it, man. Don't listen to your parents. Or listen to your parents, but also pursue your passions. Because it's not, it doesn't go away. Not for me, anyway. But removing this, this benchmark of perfection, of, of being right or wrong, that has been very freeing for me in writing music and then I realized what's even more freeing when it's my songs is I really can't be wrong like I can't be it's my freaking song like how how can it it, it like literally can't be wrong it like literally can't be wrong it could be bad but it can't be wrong <laughs> talking about how I, I, I have grown in confidence in my writing and I was asking myself why I couldn't feel that same confidence in the music part in the music part and yeah it's it was like that feeling that it, it, of being right or wrong when I'm writing lyrics I don't feel like there's wrong lyrics you know there again could be some bad lyrics but they're not wrong but with the music with writing the chords to it with, with figuring that all out it just like feels like you could be objectively wrong and that's really hard to push through for me I guess but I'm doing it for the first time in my life I'm doing it and it feels great so that's been awesome I've been really absolutely loving that I don't know if I'm going to do another musical live stream before I have the ability to live stream from my phone. Because I listened to the playback of the last one, and I just really did not like it, y'all. I just really did not like it. And I don't know, I don't know if it's because, I don't know, I don't know what's wrong, but, but I want it to sound better than it does. So let's do a quick like this week's roundup of, of what I did and then we can kind of then we'll be all then we'll be all caught up. So we set up this awesome nook 
I wrote two songs here, and I've now written some music for them as well. Very exciting. Uh, my partner Jerry worked on, we worked on this table that we we're refinishing so that we can sell it on Marketplace. I worked on one, what? I worked on this uh, headboard that I'm DIYing out of a couple pallets. I'm very excited about that and because I want to retain most of the like weathered gray oxidized wood. I was very sparing with the sanding. So as a result, it's like every time I look at this thing and see it, it could it could use more sanding. So every time I go to do something, I'm like, well, maybe I'll sand it a bit more. So I did spend a lot of time sanding this week, but it's a, it's very much like a learning process because I just don't know how to work with weather beaten wood and without sanding it down. And I specifically did not want to sand it down. So I will see. I'm probably I hope to do an actual video on the actual like construction process of it and let it be its own thing because I just would like it to have a feature. Okay, fighter jets flying overhead. We done? We're done. Another one flies. Yeah, so it's definitely been a learning process. It's kind of labor intensive to repurpose wood. You know, I had to um, break the pallets down. That was the first task. And I had to do a Google and figure out how to do that without wrecking the boards because they're very thin and just want to break. But I broke the pallets down. And then so much just sanding and trying to figure out how much I can get away with not doing so that I can still be that nice oxidized gray and when then we'll put it in my house and we'll see we'll see how I like it with something that's not perfectly polished and sanded but I do think that it might be a, a good move so I gave the wood a coat of mineral oil because I had some left over from the butcher block and that did seem to help with some of the splinteriness because it wasn't so dry but I do think moving forward, if I want to repurpose like weathered wood like this, it would be good to get like a wax based finish or some kind of a beeswaxy type thing so that uh, I can, it feels smooth without me having to sand it so much. I don't know if that's like a possibility, but these are some of like the, ex the experimental things that I have been trying to figure out. I really love uh, repurposing. I really love repurposing things. I love furniture. So might be might do a couple uh facelifts on a piece a couple pieces of furniture in the future i have a desk that i'd like to repaint the drawers on um if i could just like figure i just don't know what my the room is gonna look like like i haven't got a couch or anything for the new living like I'm, you know what i mean i'm gonna have to get some new furniture and stuff so i hesitate to paint this desk before i know what the rest of the vibe is gonna be but at the same time i'd like to paint the desk before winter because it's so much easier to do than uh, outside so these are choices that might be coming up I might be refinishing a desk I'm almost done the headboard almost so that will be done when it's done obviously and then I'm just gonna store it in the garage until I'm actually shuffling the rooms around so it will be a while before that video comes out because I probably won't post it until it can actually be you know like set up in the, the room that it's gonna be in so you're getting teased to this headboard palette project that I've been dreaming of doing forever. You're getting teased it very far in advance. I don't think a video about that will be coming up for quite some time, but you will see some footage of me here working on it. And this is something that has been like, this is like a real bucket list thing for me really. Cause I've had like cool palette furniture, cool palette headboard saved on my Pinterest board forever. And I'm so happy to finally have, uh, we haven't even had, we haven't had a headboard. We literally have been like living together for 10 years. We've not had a headboard. We just have a mattress, like, we're trash and I I just want to have a place to like set my phone and my book my stuff that's not like under my pillow or on the floor so I'm real excited I'm real excited about this headboard project and an entire video coming about, out about that soon what else did we work on this weekend this week we finished the table we made this little nook we, I worked on my headboard. Oh, yeah, we got the gutters up. We, had, we haven't had gutters in our house for a while and our siding was getting damaged. So, as you heard, that perfect timing. The gutters were up right before all the rain we're gonna be getting. So, that's an awesome job done. 
beyond that, you know, we just relaxed. We just had a good time. We went camping with some friends at the beginning of the week. And we... What did we do this past week? Oh, I went to a friend's house and jammed, played some music. I'm the happiest that I've been in a long time. I don't even think that I can... There's no words. There's no words for where I'm at right now. So I think I will let it be. Well, thank you so much for watching. Catch you on the next one. Bye. I guess I'll run as far and as fast as I can. I guess I'll run. You'll never catch me then. I remember the days of me hiding away. In the closet and under the bed So I guess I'll run I guess I'll run and the monsters are only inside of my Not a soul in sight The city's looking like a ghost town On a moonless summer night Raindrops on the windshield There's a storm moving in She said it back from somewhere That she never should have been And the thunder rolled Thunder the train. This is some of just the most interesting. Down in the valley valley so low late in the evening hear the train blow hear the train blow low. hear the train blow late in the evening hear the train Train don't stop love. It blows right through. Now it is gone, love. And so are you. <coughs> and so are you, love. And so are you. Write me a letter, send it by mail, 
send it in carol, the Birmingham jail, the Birmingham jail, the Birmingham jail, send it in carol, the Birmingham